Now, for the next part, we will be starting off again with our technical sessions. So for that, to furthermore this entire process, I would call upon my fellow colleague. Thank you. Thank you so much for presenting me here. I would like to welcome uh, the uh, next uh, chairperson, who is Dr. Pankaja Sudam Ingle. She's also the Associate Professor, Department of English, Srimiti Narsama Arts, Commerce and Science College from Amravati, Maharashtra, India. She's also the supervisor for the PhD, a writer, a film critic, the academician, and a soft skills, skills trainer, a motivational speaker, Reiki master, a meditation, uh, would you excuse me for a minute? She is also the guide, the crystal therapy, musical therapy and the color therapy. She's also uh, had a teaching experience and uh, for about 18 years. She has published uh, various research articles in national and international level. And the awards and the achievements that a doctor has achieved are recently she was awarded as a CPS ambassador for the peace 2020 in Sri Lanka. She is also certified a corporate trainer for the Competency Partnership in the Maverick Business Academy in London. And she is also one of the uh, G, uh, G, GMARF International Award for Women Educational Excellence Award. She is also the Peace Power founder and she is also certified as a soft skills trainer. All these uh, would be too less for me to announce, ma'am, but it is one of the great, uh, 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 one of the great source that I've ever read for today. I welcome you now, ma'am, and I hand over the session to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kenny, for the wonderful introduction you gave. So, good afternoon. Am I audible? Oh, yes, ma'am, you're audible, and I'm sorry for the mistake, ma'am. No, it's okay, Kenny, it's okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. You can go ahead now, ma'am. Yeah. So, good afternoon to one and all who is involved in this uh, international uh, conference that has taken up a very sensitive issue of the social, economical and the cultural studies. So since this is the second day, I'm listening all the speakers over here, even uh, who are presenting their papers and really appreciating their efforts. And uh, we all know that uh, due to this globalization and the technical revolution that we are getting to know each other from the close quarters, and uh, propagating to understand the cross culture. And uh, recently we had example of the two uh, very fine speakers. I would uh, like to narrate uh, uh, Dr. Nasser, who is from, uh, like who spoke about the Indianness and that was really a very touching part, what he spoke. And again, Mr. Uh, Navar from Thailand, uh, he spoke about Lisa. I mean, the young generation is being really floored by the musical band. And uh, so much good things to listen forward. So I really thank the organizers from uh, Shillong Law College, Shillong, and uh, in collaboration with Cape Cameroon. And I think uh, if it's convenient, we shall begin with the session. Yeah. Can we begin up? Yes, ma'am. OK. So if it's convenient now, I would like her to invite Dr. Divya to present her paper. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, Diva. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to present my paper. And the title of the paper is uh, Cultural Angst, an outline of the, the novel, Mr. Spices. It is written by uh, Chitra Banerjee Devagarani. As we all know, Chitra Banerjee Devagarani is a diasporic writer and this novel itself is a diasporic novel. So let me discuss some key points related to the term uh, diaspora. So I would like to share my uh, PPT. Uh, I believe Dr. Divya. Uh, OK, so the first presenter will be Dr. Divya. She's also a teacher of the High Secondary Education Department from Kerala. 
I believe she completed the first part. Okay, any questions from the audience? Uh, can I? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, she didn't begin her presentation yet. All right, all right, all right. So I believe now it's the session for Dr. Divya, who is also a teacher from the High Department, uh, High Secondary Education Department, and she's also from Kerala. Over to you, ma'am. I think now it's visible, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, okay. So the title of my paper is Cultural Lines and Outline of uh, the Mist uh, Mistress of Spices, which is written by Chitra Devagaruni. So uh, let me discuss some key points related to diaspora. So as we all know, diaspora refers uh, the community of dislocated people. When people move from uh, their native place uh, to some other place, the people move from their homeland. That is the basic feature in diasporic literature. They wander one place to another due to some social, political, or economic uh, reasons. The term diaspora, it comes from the Greek language, which means scatter or dispersion. This is dispersion or the scattering of a group of people from one place to another. In a cultural sense, it is a cultural moment of people who have lost their homeland and they reposition themselves in another place. In diasporic literature, migrants live in between two cultures uh, in their alien land. They are, the first one is native culture and then there is adopted culture. Immigrants migrate to alien land to live there happily. But what happens is they struggle a lot for their survival. They struggle to live between these two cultures. Uh, already I discussed their uh, native culture and that adopted one. They have the feeling of nostalgia. So when they live in between the, these two cultures, they have the feeling of nostalgia of their uh, background or the homeland. And they struggle to live in between these two cultures. South Asian diaspora writers draw their attention to basically some features are there, including cultural conflicts, the problems of assimilation, East West encounter, problems of displacement, fragmentation. They have the feeling of this nostalgia, rootlessness, and struggles to live. The novel Mistral Spices is a feeling. It is directed by Paul Maeda. It is released in the year 2005, which is based on the same novel, Mr. Spices, written by Chitra Devagaruni. And the film stars Aishira Rai. As a diasporic female writer, Devagaruni's female characters are struggling to find their own identity and their freedom. So Devagaruni focuses on the feelings of their isolation from the homeland, the problems of exile, dislocation, their mental depression, changes of human psyche, family relationships, socio-economic and political aspects, and patriarchy in contemporary Indian society. At the same time, she also explores bond between man and woman inside the family, psychological trauma, and uh, first important thing is their loveless marriages. The male characters, uh, the Bakaruni, she pointed out her male characters as self-centered people, they are materialistic people, mechanical, egoistic, and some characters are ignorant and narrow-minded people and uncultured people. In the novel, Mr. Spices, the main protagonist of the story is Tilo. She's a typical Indian woman with magical powers. As a woman with magical powers, she does not have any familiar relationship. And she lives in Auckland, West Auckland. Her main duty is spelling spices to the people in America. As an immigrant novel and other characters are immigrant characters, uh, her regular visitors are Indian immigrants. And uh, her main duty is uh, she offers spices to cure their stress. 
So all the immigrant characters in the novel, they have the problem of assimilating into American culture. There comes the cultural clash, cultural and identity clash. Uh, when she starts her love with Ravan, he is a man with a different culture and self-identity. The protagonist, Tillo, had once been tempted by Ravan, an American. Tillo lives as an ordinary woman, though she has magical powers conferred on her when she interacts with the people and with her spices. Tillo falls in love with Ravan, whom she introduces as her counterpart, a man with a different culture and self-identity. Moreover, she realizes that the love is on the footing of true attachment and is not based on power. There's another character, her name is Lalitha. She is a typical Indian woman and she is abandoned her dreams for the sake of her dominating husband. What happened to her life is she's not allowed to see his face just before the three days of her wedding. A pure cultural victim, victim of that cultural apathy and male domination in that uh, foreign land. As a patriarchal victim, she su uh, suppressed a lot, uh, suffer oppression and only the violence from her husband. There's another character, her name is Reksha. Her life is also constrained to the shackles of kitchen life. And that character uh, is a, a lot of suffering uh, type character and that is not possible or impossible for her to move outside the family. For her, life transforms into a prison. When people uh, migrate to the foreign land, uh, they expect some sort of happiness uh, in that foreign country, but no individual happiness for them and uh, uh, struggle to carry out their role in the family responsibilities and their individual happiness. So like all other characters, Deksha also has this cultural identity crisis and forced her to adapt American culture. Women suffer in Chitra Devagarani's novels, torture, frustration, and they all denied freedom. So one important thing for them, that is, they need to break and come out. Characters share common experience and faith in the foreign land. And all these characters are the victims of male domination and cultural traumas. So most important thing is they should create their own identity and achieve their dreams in the patriarchal society. These women characters, they earn to cross the boundaries of two cultures and two nations for keeping the identities of their own. They become the direct or indirect victims of male domination and cultural traumas in the foreign land. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Vivia, okay with it? Yeah. So uh, I, I believe. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can go ahead. Thank you. So, Divya, uh, I've uh, listened to your paper quite patiently and uh, you have touched to a very intricate issues where you were speaking about uh, the women protagonist, the Tito, and uh, about Lalitha you spoke and uh, Daksha, right? All the three women characters are uh, somewhere composed uh, together and they are fighting for their identity. Then the uh, woman suffering is seen over there, uh, frustrations victims by male domination, patriarchy, and uh, the beautiful part where you mentioned about uh, the class life, the kitchen life, where you uttered that word as a prison. So you have worked quite nicely, but I think that somewhere if you could add some conclusion to what she tried to project, so it will help you to enhance your paper, right? Thank you so much. Any questions from the audience?
Any question? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, can we can we move to the Thank other one? Yes, ma'am. We can move to the second round. Uh, I believe uh, uh, Miss I Kangana uh, Priya, who is also the PhD research scholar for part time Madurai Kamaraj University. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. You can start. Is it visible, ma'am? Screen, screen is visible. Is visible. You can start. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. A very good afternoon to everyone here. Uh, my paper is on the topic enslavement of women in Buchi Emichita's The Slave Girl. So before entering into my topic, I would like to give intro about my uh, author. I mean Buchi Emichita. Emichita is one of the most prominent, prolific, professional, lecturers, uh, Nigerian women writers. Being a black and female writer, she has faced uh, many types of oppression in her life, like uh, racism, sexism, and classism. But she didn't quit herself from achieving her dreams. To achieve her dreams, she has crossed many obstacles in her life. Finally, for her hard work and efforts, she achieved her dream as a writer and became a significant writer in Africa by giving her unique contribution to the African literature. Uh, she is selected as one of the members in British Home Secretary's Advisory Council of Race. She is also selected as one of the best British young novelists by Granta Magazine. She also received honorary doctorate of literature from Fairleigh Dickinson University. She also received Jo Campbell Award, Daughter of Mark Tain Award, and the third best world, write world writer awards uh, for her works. She has written autobiography, articles, children books, uh, and many novels and plays, and even the plays for televisions. Here, in this novel, uh, The Slave Girl, uh, The Slave Girl is an award-winning novel. It is an award-winning novel. It received Joe Campbell Award. And here in this novel, The Slave Girl, Emishta brings out the real-life incidents of her mother, her name, Alice Ogbanji Ojibida, who was sold into the slavery by her own brother just for buying a silk head tie for his cultural dance. Femester brings the real life incidents of her mother, mother through her protagonist, Ogbanji Ojibita. Even she keeps her mother name for the protagonist. So Ojibita is a, a special and precious daughter of her parents, Oda and Umeri, uh, because uh, she is the first girl child to live in her family as her parents had lost uh, many girl children at birth in their life. So Ojibita is a special daughter for them. Um, though Ojibita is a special daughter uh, for her parents, her father was not with her mother when she was delivering her uh, baby Ojibita. Uh, he, went to the, he went to his work and even he ordered his sons to go to the farm to continue their work. And he didn't even understand the uh, pains of uh, the women during their delivery pain. Um, once uh, this Umedi, he delivered, uh, he gave birth to this Ojibita. She found her daughter was in alive and she ran fast to the uh, medicine man, even though she didn't consider about the physical condition of her body. She ran fast to the medicine man just to save her daughter's life because she's the first uh, girl child to live. So she ran fast to the medicine man and uh, with the help of uh, by getting the advice from the medicine man uh, her husband Oda took a long journey to the place called Idu uh, to get chomps because uh, he, uh, he needed uh, he asked uh, Oda to get chomps to save his uh, daughter's life so he took a long journey to Idu uh, it is a place name it is a very dangerous place so he crossed uh, faced many dangers on his way to uh, to reach Ido, but successfully he reached Ido and brought charms for his daughter. And after doing some chantation by the medicine man, they tied the charms on the arms of uh, Ojibita uh, just to save her life from the bad spread. So, and this Ojibita, as a special daughter of their family members, uh, even they mock tattoos on their on her face because uh, they are living in Ibiza. Ibiza is a, a place. In Ibuza, uh, in Ibo community, otherwise they will call Ibo community. In Ibo community, they would follow a lot of uh, customs. So it is one of the customs. If a girl is very important in a family, then they would mark 
uh, tattoos on her face or on her on her body just to show others that she is very important for 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 her family and at the same time uh, they wanted to save her uh, daughter from um, the kidnappers because in uh, ibo community there is a custom there is also a custom if a man uh, wants to make a, uh, a woman to be his wife then he can make her to be his wife just by cutting a lock of hair so just to protect her daughter from the kidnappers uh, they just mark the tattoos on her a face because she is a very important and special and precious daughter for her parents that ojipitos happiness and her freedom was just only for 6 years she lived happily and freedomly with her parents only for 6 years because unfortunately um, her parents died because of a disease called palansa ojipita was left alone and no one was there to take care of her her own brother also needed money for his dance for his uloko dance uloko dance is one of the dances in a uh, ibo community so he just needed a uh, money for his dance so he thought to sell his own sister ojibita to the uh, at, uh, to the slavery uh, market so he took a journey to the onitsha market where the slavery trades would take place um ojibita who believed her brother completely took a journey with him and uh, unfortunately her belief on her brother had broken once he sold his own sister to the a rich market woman ma palagada in the onitsha you know, market and he left the place so so her uh, happiness and freedom was just only 6 years she just entered into the uh, world of uh, slavery from the world of freedom so in ma palagada's house already there are uh, there were seven slaves and now the ojibita is also one of the one among the slaves uh, totally eight slaves so four uh, boys uh, four boy slaves and four girl slaves ma palagada and pa palagadas they are the mali were the masters for the eight slaves so um, being a slave is an uh, unbearable one ojibita as life as a slave is an unbearable one uh, because they have a lot of rules and regulations to follow as slaves as slaves in the uh, masters in their masters house Uh, Chiago is the first slave uh, girl. She is the first and eldest slave girl in the Palagada house, and uh, and um, others are Ojibita, Amana, Novenus, and four 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 more boy slaves are also there. So, what are the rules and regulations they have to follow as slaves in Palagada house? Means they have to get up early in the morning at five o'clock, and they want to take a uh, bath in the stream, and they have to after taking bath, they have to. Uh, fetch the water from the stream, and they want to fill the water in the household. Then after that, they want to do all the household works. Once they finish the household works, they wanted to go to the uh, stalls. They wanted to uh, uh, do uh, trading business and uh, uh, stitching, sewing, etc. And um, even here, I want I would like to mention one of the customs followed by Ibo community. If a girl is in her menses, she is not allowed to enter into the stream. Stream uh, because. it is uh, because they believe that uh, it is one of the customs that it should not the girl should not pollute the stream in the meantime uh, there is also one of the custom uh, customs followed by ebook uh, people if a girl is in her menses she is not allowed to enter the house uh, if the head of the family has an allow title allow title is a uh, one of the titles in ebook community it is a uh, the biggest title head title so if the head of the family is in there if the head of the family has an allow title a girl who is in menses is not allowed to enter the house so only uh, only for that reason uh, when uh, ojibita's mother um, she was uh, she was uh, with her uh, she was in the delivery pen her neighbor ukapaka's wife uh, she helped her but she didn't enter into the house of uh, umedis because Uh, this uh, Ojibda's father has an allow title, so the Ukabaka's wife she didn't enter into the house school as she is in her menses. So this is also one of the customs followed by the Ibo community. Here, the slaves they have all these rules and they have to follow all these uh, rules and regulations as slaves in their slavery life. And um, um, the slaves in Palagada's house they suffer not only physically but also mentally. I would like to give some two instances. Um, this protagonist Ojibita. Uh, she is a very young girl. She is just seven years old. Uh, as a slave, she didn't even get any freedom. She didn't even all the slaves. All the slaves didn't even get freedom. 
to talk or to chat even among the slaves they will uh, they will get time only uh, at the night time that too secretly they will talk among themselves they will share their feelings emotions pains what they are uh, facing in their uh, slavery life so this wajibita and her uh, fellow slave amena uh, one day they got a chance to play in the ground they got a time to play in the ground they were very happy they were very happy with the enthusiasm they played in the ground unknowingly and without their uh, with the uh, with their enthusiasm they made uh, much noises which made uh, disturbance to which made irritation to uh, the master papalagada as a result he gave a nice whip to both the girls wajibita as well as her friend amana they were very young girls uh, but he gave a nice whip to both of them they cried a lot uh, and uh, as they were not able to bear the pain he didn't even show the pity to them and he he has shown the power of uh, the superiority power over them as a master and um, uh, he didn't even uh, understand the pains uh, the two children were uh, bearing and even the other slaves were helpless as they were slaves in their master's house and then one more another one more incident is uh, chiago the eldest slave she is the eldest slave of uh, the house uh, she has suffered both physically and mentally uh, this two masters pa palagadas uh, san pa palagadas san a uh, clifford clifford and pa palagada they have used uh, this chiago uh, as a doll to play they have uh, used her body to just to fulfill their uh, sexual appetite by violating her uh she was not able to um voice out even though she voiced out uh she was, her voice became unheard uh she, though she didn't like both the masters she had no other way as she was a slave she had to accept all the pains given by their masters one day she even complained about uh, the misbehavior of the masters to the ma palagada but she remained uh, unheard here i would like to say about this uh, the kaitri spy works uh, the essay is a can subaltern uh, speaks some yes suppose the subaltern can speak but sometimes the uh, the subaltern's voices and their pains and emotions became unheard and unmute okay through this uh, i would like to uh, through this the author uh, this emista she tries to bring out how these women are treated as an object in the patriarchal society how women are longing for their freedom uh, to attain their self identities to self respect and they how they I try to emancipate from their uh, slavery life and how this uh, men they how women became victim over their body and etc so after this uh, ma palagada's death uh, chia go the elder slave she became a wife of pa palagada because there is also a custom if the uh, wife of the uh, master die then the elder slave has to become a a wife for the master so chiago the eldest slave of the house became a wife to the papalagada and also delivered the boy baby after mas death this papalagada gave freedom to all the slaves and uh, only wajibita uh, she knew the native place zibuza her native place zibuza so she was allowed to go back to her native place and she was very happy and everybody everybody was shocked uh, by seeing paus behavior uh, because she gave freedom this uh, Ojibira, the protagonist, she got her freedom, and also she assured her master, Kapalagada, that she will return back the money, that she will return back the uh, slavery money, because her uh, brother he sold his sister Ojibira just for eight pounds for his ulogo dance. So he assured, uh, she assured her master that she would return back the money uh, once she returned back to her, uh, returned back to the native place. In native, she married Jacob. and uh, when he when jacob come to know about the slavery life of wajibita he returned back the uh, re- uh, slavery amount to the uh, pa- palagada san clifford and he freed completely uh, uh, wajibita from her slavery life wajibita was very happy and she was on her cloud nine that she became free uh, but one thing she didn't understand um, she didn't realize that her freedom is not a, a real freedom because again she was in the name of uh, marriage in the uh, platform of marriage she is um moving she is moving from one hand one master to another master as a, like became a, she became a slave to the another master named jacob so i would like to conclude my paper by saying this um here though that has uh, uh, mentioned about the enslavement of women i would like to say that uh, still women are still there are women 
they are ready to accept their submissive role to play in the patriarchal society this is a main mistake they are not understanding that women are having their own world where they would get recognitions where they would get their freedom self and they can they can live independently with their self respect and their self independence they are not understanding that instead uh, they are accepting their submissive role in the patriarchal society even they are accepting to follow the customs traditions rituals rites superstitious beliefs thrown by the society so this is a main mistakes the, the women are doing and i would like to conclude by uh, saying the a quotation of the french writer sidonic gabriele collatte a woman who thinks that she is intelligent demands equal rights with man a woman who is intelligent does not thank you thank you for help yeah hello oh yes ma'am yeah so kanaka i'm quite impressed uh, by your presentation i mean thank the you, topic, yeah the uh, topic which you have taken up i listened to you very patiently word by word sentence by okay. sentence and okay. uh, you were able to carry us uh, into nigeria the way okay. you described uh, your author buchi and yes, uh, the way she fought for the two fold fight as a black and as a female female yes yes and uh, the way she put forward the agonies of the protagonist so here the protagonist doesn't appear to be an individual although uh, what to say an uh, episode has struck in her life but we can visualize the entire women community we are being suffered there yes so, ma'am still we are suffering yeah yeah very true the yes. slavery i mean the, it was really uh, you know hair raising where a seven uh, year girl old girl is been sold and only six years she got to live into freedom and the later life the emotional and the physical ruptures yes, not yes. even she, uh, but the other women also and uh, i would like to appreciate the character of uh, shia gol the way i mean uh, due mm. to the cultural aspect she could be the wife of uh, the of mother her. yeah um, and yes. the way she freed all the um, uh, slaves you know somewhere we could find the writer speaking through her and yes, uh, again the protagonist getting married and being ruled by the second master the yeah the another me so to the conclusion again uh, wherever the woman is moving somewhere by tradition or the culture or by the patriarchy she has been enslaved here or there so yes. she should come out she should realize her potential fight yes. and prove her identity so yes ma'am yes yeah, so i'm quite happy kanaga uh, yes. thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am thank you let's move forward yeah so the next uh, presenter would be jijesh tk who is also the uh, assistant professor from the pg department of english emea arts and science from the college condotti over to you ma'am am i audible ma'am yeah you are audible can you yes 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 ma'am over to you hello yes yes sir hello am i audible yeah yeah mr jitesh right quite audible okay 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 good afternoon everyone my paper is casteism in indian culture values narratives and counter narratives a penetration through indian literature yes uh, this topic is uh, widely discussed not only in india and abroad this caste system is one of the major issues as far as india is concerned it has been a non ending discussion throughout the indian history and uh, many argue that uh, the reason behind this casteism casteism is it has vedic roots and some others disagree with it so that's why my title narratives and uh, counter narratives uh i'm from kerala here in kerala so many intellectual discussions are going on uh this topic this casteism related topics and uh, in kerala uh, universities 
uh, we can see uh, a lot of things, a lot of uh, uh, chapters, poems, uh, articles, etc. are included to discuss these matters, casteism related uh, things, the lit issues, etc. And uh, here I would like to uh, give some, I would like to present something on what are the arguments, what are the narratives on this uh, caste system in India and the reasons behind it and what are the counter narratives against it. And uh, as a concluding part, as a Vedic student, uh, uh, I would like to uh, give my own opinion about these arguments these uh, narratives and counter arguments, counter narratives. Okay, here uh, we know that Dr. B. R. Ambedkar is one of the important personalities. He criticizes, he criticizes the caste system in India through his various speeches and various writings. In Kerala, uh, uh, many of the university syllabus, we can see a uh, article named annihilation of caste annihilation of caste is one of his important works here he says that this man uh, our uh, uh, dr ambedkar says that this uh, uh, vedic literature vedic ways hinduism has no equality and he says that this chaturvarnya is the main cause behind this inequality in in this culture and it provides all these inequalities in India and he has uh, made, he has delivered a lecture and a, a speech and it is very famous. Uh, it is called a speech at Mahad, a speech at Mahad. Mahad is a place in Maharashtra and uh, there was a protest against this untouchability and it happened in 1927 and that uh, speech, a speech at Mahad is uh, there in the Calicut University, Kerala University syllabus for studying degree students. And uh, in Sharan Kumar Limbala's Akarmashi, Akarmashi is also in the syllabus. Uh, this person is a so-called Dalit uh, personality or Dalit writer. And uh, this uh, Akarmashi is his uh, autobiographical writing where he presented, he expressed his own sufferings. He suffered a lot when he was a, a child. Uh, it's because of the untouchability and uh, caste discrimination in his area. Then uh, towards an aesthetic of Delhi the literature is an, another important uh, writing of uh, um, Sharan Kumar Limpale. Here also he argues this caste system. Then Mulkiraj Anand is an another person. Uh, he has written Cooley, Untouchable, etc. are his famous writings. Here also we see this uh, sufferings and problems of caste system. Then Kerala, there is a intellectual personality. He was a the writer named Sanni Kabikade. He has written many books, and uh, uh, in that books, when we read, when we analyze the, these books, we can see that this caste system has rooted from Vedic literature and Chaturvarnam, Bhagavad Gita, etc. Are the roots of this caste system? That's what his arguments, and uh, he commented against Ramayana in Ramayana, Shambhu Goddess Madhur by Rama in uh, Uttarakanta is also due to uh, this uh, caste uh, related discrimination this uh, uh, sambuga is called uh, is sambuga is a uh, so called uh, shudra person that was the reason behind it he argued so in mahabharata egalavya's story we know that it is a famous one that egalavya's uh, uh, finger was asked by his guru dronacharya it is because he was a son of nishada a tribal person that's the reason behind it okay then uh, in when we come to vedic literature we can see uh, uh, that purusha sukta in rigveda uh, where uh, it says that brahmano mukhamasi it means brahman was uh, created from purusha sahaj kshatriya from created from arms etc etc and in bhagavad gita uh, it says that chadur varne maya srishtam guna karma vibhagasaha here it says that this Chadur Varna, the four Varnas are created by uh, our Lord itself uh, proclaimed in Bhagavad Gita. So these are various arguments, uh, narratives created uh, in India and it uh, argues against the Chadur Varna system, etc, etc. And when we come to the counter arguments against it, we can see that 
why these people why we are this much against our vedic literature vedic related literature when we come to that point we can see that this macaulay max muller and borden are the three person three important figures they created this propaganda against indian culture especially the vedic rooted indian culture we know that in macaulay I minutes mean 1835 he wrote the what was the main intention behind that macaulay minute he wanted to destroy this indian culture and create a culture where he wrote that we must at present do our best to form a clan of persons indians in blood and color and english in taste opinions etc that's what his intention and max muller uh, tried to misinterpret our vedas and he made commentaries on vedas and he misinterpreted in 1850s a wealthy person named borden he he made a chair in cambridge university it's borden chair and it's uh, 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 and uh, their intention was to make to destroy our indian culture to destroy our vedic culture and to misinterpret indian culture that's what the main intention that is Uh, uh, uh many uh, persons uh, say that that is the main reason behind this type of uh, anti vedic anti indian culture related narratives in india okay and uh, when we come to uh, our vedic related literature we see that this varna and caste are two different things the cults of india is we made both of them are equal this caste and varna both of them are different things varna is different from caste it is not at all caste chatur varna means chatur uh, varna that means four varnas varna is a kind of natural quality of uh, human beings uh, every personality has different natures somebody are more suitable for teaching somebody are uh, suitable for uh, various type of uh, uh, soldiers some others are business minded so on the basis of the quality uh, on the basis of gunas that is uh, uh, satvika rajasika tamasika gunas these human beings are divided into uh, four types of four varnas that four varnas are everywhere in this world it is not an a discrimination actually that is what really varna we shouldn't misinterpret as caste uh, actually what is happened in india throughout in our history this varna is misinterpreted as caste and on the basis of it this type of narratives are uh, are created throughout india and uh, Uh, when we come to the vedic literature we can see there are two divisions one is shruti and the second uh, one is smriti shruti means the eternal laws it is applicable to all the time and all the places but smriti means for a particular time it is applicable for a particular time it is applicable for a specific uh, area so here also we uh, many of the people don't know what is the difference between shruti and smriti actually manusmriti is a smriti in the opening of manusmriti it says that vedo kilo dharma moolam that is the root of dharma is vedas so this smriti obeys vedic root okay and if we see anything contrary to this uh, this manusmriti we should reject it manusmriti is not for all the time and many of the people don't know even the the differences between shruti and smriti and uh, they are creating arguments against manusmriti and vedic system the caste uh, this varna system etc etc uh, okay and uh, here what we have to do is i think in this type of intellectual conferences in the type of discussions we must problematizes this type of problem this type of things this caste uh, uh, this uh, varna etc 
in among the intellectuals and we should try to uh, to to understand what are these concepts and we should uh, wipe out this misinterpretations from our scenario and then only we can make uh, 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 we can break the walls of caste discrimination yes uh, uh, that's what uh, yeah really that is what the 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 mantras pro uh, given by our vedic system here in the in the rigveda we can see an aikyamatya suktam it says that is samano mantra samiti samani samanam manasaha chittamesha that means let us try to walk together let us try to think together 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 so actually vedic uh, rooted indian culture tries to make us a unit a unity uh, at vasudeva kudumbaka the whole world is one family that is what the rishi mantra but in india we see sadly we can see a lot of narratives against this type of things and some people's vested interest we are making uh, so many walls in between human beings it should be breaked up it should be uh, broken down uh, so we must try to problematize this type of things this type of uh, terminology in this inter intellectual discussions then only we can wipe out this casteism and discrimination from human beings so that's what my paper thank you for all of you okay hey, thank you gsc uh, any questions okay. from the audience um there is no questions ma'am from the uh, audience yeah i believe uh, we should proceed forward ma'am okay well uh, gsg i have uh, listened to you and uh, uh, if you have, if you really wish to listen my comment on it again with the similar participants i was listening quite patiently towards whatever you were speaking and about the caste based system so i would like to put forward my views that uh, speaking about india there are many appreciating values cultures the vedic and so many other things over here okay but we can't deny okay. the reality of the indian culture that is on the caste based system where one category okay. is been privileged where the other category it is uh, oppressed suppressed and treated lowly even than the animals so due uh, to yes. dr baba saheb ambedkar and uh, many activists after the revolution in the educational field they came up the victims they tried yes. to voice what they had suffered and i appreciate appreciate jsg what you have been propagating through your uh, paper and uh, this caste system okay. it will eradicate from india only if we change the mindset and treat everyone as the humans rather than speaking about the caste right thank you so much yes yes yes, yes okay okay thank, thank you so much thank you. over to you kani okay thank you ma'am uh, our next presenter is mr chintan bhat who is also a research scholar from gujarat university gujarat india over to you ma'am yes. you may start yes hello everyone a very good afternoon to all of you good afternoon my sir my name is chintan bhat and i uh, present i'm a research scholar at gujarat university so today i'm going to talk about the topic which is entitled the diasporic consciousness reflected in kavita daswani's work for matrimonial purposes uh so it seems oh, we lost you oh yes you're, you're back sir yes 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 so uh, about the topic i'm going to discuss today so the literature of diaspora community chiefly attempts to integrate into a theme such as new culture cultural adaptation estrangement loneliness ethnic clashes 
and many others. An analysis of such diasporic writing reveals that longing for the nation, wistfulness, and various kind of sorrows of being separated from one's native country are explored as a predominant aspect. Uh, that's uh, reproduced in both traditional as well as contemporary diasporic uh, literary writing. In the works of Indian diaspora authors, there are numerous playwrights who deliberate a number of diasporic involvement in their novels, poetry, and others, other forms of literature. Among many Indo-American authors, Kavita Daswan is worth to remember and a significant name. She chiefly expresses her own narrative about various involvements as Indian diaspora writer at the global level. She portrays India and American culture brilliantly. And uh, we can also observe her narratives um, that preserving and mentioning the Indian ethnicity in magnificent manner. Kavita Daswani in her novel, For Matrimonial Purposes, presents a distinctive narration that reflects the cultural depiction of India in the realistic manner. Further, in the novel, she creates such a plot and magic characters who are the people with contemporary ideology who are trying to advance their career and discover a perfect life partner in America while maintaining their own Indian identity. The various cultural and sociological consequences have been amalgamated in a wonderful way into diasporic literary writing that resulting in a thriving postmodern genre, which is diasporic literature. The impact of writing of Indian diaspora has been documented and considered at a global level impact. The Indian diaspora writer has facilitated this particular genre of writing and theater in such wonderful manner. Indo-American diaspora give reflection of Indian social and cultural aspects in their literary writing. Along with that, the various encounters of being dispersed or displaced from India to America are specially presented all the way through their various accounts of their works. Progressively, the writers later began socializing the elements of nostalgia in their host countries. Furthermore, the novel represents an assessment which exposes a distinctive experience of uh, an Indian immigrant into American society. I want to quote uh, one of the scholars here. As Robin Cohen rightly observed, the diasporic community represented their own strong bonds to their own country. The diasporic psyche and consciousness are split between two and frequently opposing concept of motherland and the other country. The enormous borders of Western culture are far too large for the Indian culture's aspect. As a result of a resulting void, they must ask themselves, where do I belong? In the present novel, Kavita Daswani presents an ideal homeland. The existence of diasporic consciousness and melancholy in diasporic literature are prevalent themes. This is related to idea of nostalgia and home country. When Kavita Daswani shifted to America, she had strong emotional connections with the homeland India. This root of nostalgia for India is reflected in her writing as well. In the present novel, the one generation's greater sense of incompleteness while frequently shifting from India to America further reflected the hyphenated identity as well, which is Indo-American. It is quite natural that when a person shifts to any other country, they also deal with so many different social and cultural norms of the host country. Their own identity becomes a mixture of host culture's aspect too. The efforts to adapt a new American culture while maintaining one's own native Indian culture is revealed through the present world. The essential aspect of diaspora writers are dispersion, and uh, essential aspect of homeland 
and broader maintenance of homeland's values. In the present work, the narration of a young girl living in America alone and her parents living in India, in Mumbai, who, is, uh, who tries hopelessly to discover a perfect man for, the, for their daughter. That one is present work constructed on her individual involvement of traveling across Indian and American beliefs and various societal notions as well. Kavita Dashwani relocated to America as the child of Indian parents. She also comes to meet her family in Mumbai on a regular basis. As the name of work is, is a, an indication of central theme of the story, which is the Indian framework and that shows importance of marriage at the right age. She further portrays that struggle to get married and also to the magic character. Anju beautifully explains the adversities, predicaments and various catastrophes that young girl and her parents face uh, in this narration. Principally uh, for Anju, the narrator and the family who are concerned about unmarried daughter. By focusing on the marriage in various aspects of it, uh, she beautifully projects the Indian society and their Indian conception, especially related to marriage. So I would like to conclude by saying that as the numerous diasporic novels set in America, especially about Indian immigrants and their various involvements, the present world for matrimonial purposes can be used as a case study in the study of cultural uniqueness and diasporic consciousness in fact. Identity is organized in the novel as a representation of Indian social and cultural aspects. Along with that, Indian attires, linguistic aspects, and domestic, domestic life, all of these aspects contribute to her own Indian identity the majority of Indian people have been educated in essential of uh, Indian social and cultural values. In a similar manner, in this narrative, we can observe such Indian elements too. Even, even though uh, many contemporary concepts have arrived in, in Indian society, but it is true that Indians continue committed to their unique ethos since it has significantly influenced them. And all these aspects reflected in the writings of Indian diaspora and the diasporic consciousness. That is all from my part. Any questions from the audience? No questions as of now, ma'am. Okay, okay. So, Mr. Chintan Pat, uh, yes. you have put forward very nicely about the diasporic literature which is coming up nowadays and uh, Kavita Daswani with her views on uh, her book Matrimony, the Indianness, the dislocation, rootlessness, identity crisis, all you have mentioned. Uh, it would be nice if you could conclude it a little bit from a from your perspective, right? So you can improve next time. Thank yes. you so much. Yeah, you. over to you, Kani. All right, so I believe we've, uh, we're done with the session uh, four. Thank you so much, ma'am, for co for cooperating throughout the whole session. You have really shared the session so well. And I apologize for the inconveniences that has had in the beginning of the session. Oh, for no, the cliches that have been, happened. Uh, now I would like to hand over Thank you so much, ma'am. But uh, there were a few mistakes that I made uh, to which I really apologize, ma'am. And I uh, uh, promise you that that will never repeat in the further sessions, ma'am. You, you are too good, Kani. And thank you, Dr. Redzin, for inviting me and everyone to listen to me patiently. Thank you.